How long did it take for the Earth to end? Three short days. So I've been making games for about 20 years. I've worked on just about every platform since the Game Boy. It almost shows my age if I say uh, I've probably worked on about 120 games. Mike has uh, an amazing grasp of old school gameplay and an ama a massive love of, of that core gameplay. We have three studios, two in Canada, one here over in the States, over in Emeryville. And we work on a lot of boutique type games. Paramount gave us the opportunity to work on pretty much any game we wanted to in the Paramount catalog. Immediately the, the game that jumped out was uh, War of the Worlds. We talked to him a little bit about the ideas and some thoughts we had about it, but ultimately we settled on would not be the Spielberg movie and not be the 1953 movie, but something that was a little bit in between and something that, was, that could be our own. That this guy is in the middle of London, is dead London, and all he has is himself. And he's, it's a very personal story, even though there's this massive story happening around it. We chose to go with 2D for War of the Worlds we could have easily done a 3D side-scrolling game. But ultimately, when we started this game, we were thinking something along the lines of a 16-bit Genesis-style game. A lot of the games that inspired this whole look and feel were flashback out of this world, the really classic Prince of Persia. These are adventure games. One of the best things about those games was you would learn from your mistake. Uh, you die often. If you get shot, you're dead. There's no health bar. There's no standardized power-up system or anything like that. This is more realistic. and. Because of that, the game is really difficult, and we as gamers appreciate that. When we set out to do War of the Worlds, we knew we would have to put it in a more modern sense, and uh, the best person to do that was this author we had uh, heard about and read about. Uh, his name's Chris Fowler. I've read everything he's ever done, and I really didn't trust anybody else to write our War of the Worlds story in London. When Paramount came to me and asked me if I'd like to write a script, for the game. They said they wanted to recapture everything that made the book great, which is brilliant for a writer because how often do you get a chance to work on something like this? I've been very fortunate to have Chris Hulsbeck as our uh, music composer on the game. I grew up with the Commodore 64 and some of my favorite music on that system came from Chris. So very early on, uh, Paramount decided that they wanted to go with real life orchestra on this project and so we found an orchestra in Macedonia. It was a funny day when everybody's like, picking their favorite person to, to narrate, and it pretty much across the board was Patrick Stewart. We were very lucky that he said yes, and it was, it was amazing working with him. He's such a talented person. The slight nuances in his voice can change the meaning in incredible ways I never realized that uh, could happen. Just as I had watched Amoeba moving about on my microscope slide, so the Martians saw us. My favorite part about War of the Worlds has actually been watching the visual style come together. The first hour of this game, the way we take you from a guy on a train and put him into the middle of hell on Earth. I couldn't be happier with the way it looks and feels and, and the, the colors we've chosen for the game. But even more so than that is watching people actually play the game and identify that as one of the most distinguishing things about War of the Worlds.